This is a Laysan albatross. It kinda looks like a seagull, but it's slightly bigger. They are found primarily in Laysan Island, hence the name, Laysan albatross. When in air, these birds can fly hundreds of miles without flapping their wings. They can fly continuously for more than a week, and even sleep while the flight is on autopilot. And when it's breeding season, they fly back to their breeding ground. These birds have a single partner for life and stay committed to the relationship. When the males and females arrive in their previous mating location, they search for their lifelong partner. They might not remember the face, but they remember the dance they shared. Maybe that female is the previous partner. Nope, she isn't. Maybe she is the one then. Not her too. And her? Yup, the real partner is found. They now move towards their previous nest. Then they mate in that nest. When there are more females and few males, the male will wander off and greet some non-paired females. But he won't form a relation though. It's just a meeting and greeting. He is actually loyal to the first one. Then all of them fly to get some food. They spend several weeks eating and flying and return home when the female is ready to lay the egg. For the meet and greet female, she won't get to stay with the male, so she teams up with another female to raise the newborn egg. The male and female pair will do just fine raising one kid, but if it's two greeted females, there will be a problem. Raising and feeding more than one chick is almost impossible. So, which one will they raise? Well, they sometimes solve the situation like this. At least both are happy with the results. The egg will hatch in around two months, and they will raise it for a few more months. Then kids join the dance class for around 10 years, and then show the moves to newly found chicks. Well, the cycle continues. These are barnacles, and they are found almost everywhere, even attached to whales, turtles, rocks, and boats. Every member of the Flying Dutchman has barnacles on them. And this is also a barnacle if you have played Valheim. So, you can think of them as multiverse level creatures. Barnacles are crustaceans, just like crabs and lobsters. They have these feathery leg like structures called cirri that gather food and help to filter the water. Don't confuse this cirri with this cirri, it's completely useless. Barnacles are cemented to the surface and can't move, they always stay inside that shell. But if they can't move, how do they even mate? Barnacles are hermaphrodite, and they have a very long history. Look, the history is coming out, and man, it's really long, around eight times its length. If we had that long history, long distance relationship wouldn't be a problem, I guess. Since the barnacles are almost blind, they completely rely on these whips for searching and mating. And what's the mating process? Well, it's the home delivery system. The noodle first follows the scent and locates the neighbor. Then, it enters the home and drops the seed, and then searches for another one. Some other barnacle drops its seed on this guy. It's a happy mutual relationship. These guys invented home delivery system before we invented homes, and we think we are the intelligent ones. For this lonely guy, he has two options. Either scatter the seeds on the water and hope for someone to catch it, or simply mate with itself. Yup. They can do that too, mating with itself and making eggs, though it doesn't happen much. After eggs hatch, they just float in water. Some become food for marine life, and some search for a stable base to attach to. It's a fascinating evolution, but you shouldn't get attached to their history, I guess. This is a cat, and we all know this furball. They are the most loved animals after dogs. They are small, low maintenance, and they mind their own business. So. It's practically easier to own a cat than a dog. Since cats don't usually obey the owners, many people think cats don't love them. But, I myself have a cat, and I can say with confidence, it does care about me, a lot in fact, but it doesn't obey me though. Okay, if you don't want to know its mating process, just skip to this time. For those who are still here, let's start the weird mating of cats. When a female cat gets in mood, she becomes restless, and makes a howling sound. 
She shows a lot of affection, doesn't eat much, raises the butt kinda like this, sprays urine everywhere and does the signature move, licking. If your cat does this, it means she needs a date. So, get her one. If not, she will run away from home in search of mail. Don't worry, she will get right back after finishing her business. She then releases the pheromones and howls to advertise her situation. Males, either pets or ferals, will track her down from the sound or pheromones and gather around her. Now, it's a showdown. The males fight and scratch each other, and the fight can be brutal. And, the winner is decided. It's a feral male. Now he climbs and bites the neck of the female and mounts his weapon. The mating is actually painful, and the female makes a crying sound. And the reason is this. This is a cat's penis, and I'm not joking. These reverse spikes are not squishy things. They are made from keratin, the same material that makes its claws. So the process is painful for females. But the weird thing is, it's actually a necessary pain. Yup, females need to feel the pain to produce the eggs inside the ovaries. And no pain means no eggs, no fertilization, and no kittens. Female mates with as many males as possible within that heat period, and returns home. One female can fertilize many males' seeds at the same time, and the result is this. If you have ever wondered why the sibling kittens are different and colorful, well, all of these kittens have different fathers. Yup, it's called super fecundation, and it's a normal thing for cats. This fly-like insect is called neotrogla. Though it can fly, it's not a fly. In fact, it is closer to lice than the flies. Since it's a winged louse, it's not a parasite, and the main food of this lice is bat guano. So, these lice are found in the dry bat caves of Brazil. They also eat dead bats and small organic matters. Lice with wings is kinda weird, but the weirdest part is their mating. This is probably the one and only species where females have the penis. <coughs> yup, you heard me right. Females have a straw-type organ called gynosome which is used for mating. Then you may wonder, what do males have? Well, they have a hole. Huh? Yup, these species take lovemaking to whole new level. Bonk. When it's mating time, the female searches for the ripe and juicy male and tracks him through the pheromones. She approaches him and immediately mounts him. Then she starts sucking all the seminal fluids from male's body. It's like a motor pump sucking water. The mating process lasts for more than 50 hours, and she won't stop her engine until he is completely dry. This is done not only for fertilization, but also as a food source. Yup, it's their food supply as well. They use sperm for fertilization and remaining fluids act as food. In that barren dry environment, where the only food source is bat's poop, the seminal fluids is regarded as the highest nutrient delicacy. So as soon as they find a juicy male, they instantly dip the straw and start sucking. Even small, immature females are sometimes found climbing the adult males. They get free food, so they just don't care about anything else. This Pinocchio is Southern Darwin's frog. Charles Darwin found this frog on the southern side of Chile in Argentina, so it was named like that. There is also a northern species with similar mating style, but scientists say it's probably extinct. So, we'll talk about the southern one in this video. These frogs are small, just around 2 centimeters in length. When it's mating time, the male makes a pip-pip sound or whistles to call the female. After some time, a willing female arrives in his location. When talking about frog mating, you would probably imagine the male being the backpack, like this. But these females won't carry the males, at least not yet. Instead, the male leads and guides the female to the desired location. This is the location, the moist dried leaves area. Now the female goes under the male and usually lays around six eggs in the leaves. It's the brief time when male gets to be a backpack and she goes away. Now it's up to male to care for the eggs. The male then spreads the sperm and fertilizes them. He guards the eggs for around 20 days or until they change into small tadpoles. Then he eats them, not eating and digesting, but gulping and keeping them in the vocal sacs. He keeps those eggs in his vocal sacs for around two months. The tadpoles develop into small frogs inside that sack. When it's almost time for kids to come out, he again whistles and calls another female for the next batch of eggs. The movement of small frogs can be seen from outside. It's kinda to show that he is a great father. 
and females are happy to lay eggs for caring males. So, by the time the new tadpoles are ready to eat, male vomits the grown froglets one by one and clears the vocal sac. Then the small frogs go away, and the male gulps the new batch of tadpoles. And the cycle continues. Okay, I am thinking of introducing a new series about unknown and weird animal facts. Share your thoughts about that in the comments. And as always, I love you guys.